Morning, Sarah. Good morning, Dr. Silverman. Linda Hamilton is an American film, theater, and television actress. The most desirable woman of the 90s had personal dramas, downtime at work, and a severe illness with which she is still struggling. See more about this in our video. Enjoy watching! Linda Hamilton – How Sarah Connor from The Terminator Lives and How Much She Earns Linda Carroll Hamilton was born on September 26, 1956, in the American city of Salisbury, Maryland. The girl's father, Carol Stanford Hamilton, was a doctor. He died in a car accident when she was five years old. Her mother, Barbara Kyle Holt, later married the local police chief. Linda has an older sister, Laura, and a younger brother, Ford. She also had a twin sister, Leslie, who died in August 2020. With age, they became friends, but in childhood, the future star did everything to be different from Leslie. She changed haircuts, dyed her hair in different colors, and dressed in boys' clothes. By the way, as a child, our hero didn't dream of becoming an actress. She wanted to be a firefighter or an archaeologist. Later in life, the celebrity said she grew up in a very boring, white Anglo-Saxon family and read books avidly in her spare time. And yet, she liked to go on stage in amateur school productions with her twin sister. The girls attended the Wacomico High School in Salisbury. At that time, the rebellious Linda still struggled with her desire to be different from Leslie. Out of desperation, she lost control and started comforting herself with food. She ended up weighing around 175 pounds. After high school, she studied for two years at Washington College in Chestertown, where she attended a theater program. An acting teacher told our young hero she had no chance of succeeding as an actress, but these words did not discourage the girl from continuing to develop in this direction. She went to New York, where she attended workshops of the famous master and actor Lee Strasberg at his studio. After graduation, she moved to California and started acting in low-budget series. Her mental health remained unstable at the time. Overcome by depression, she did not go to therapy but suppressed the disease with alcohol and even prohibited substances. However, it did not prevent her from making her professional debut at 23, playing a small role in the 1979 drama Night Flowers. In 1980, Linda appeared in an episode of the NBC series Shirley and starred in the TV films Reunion and Rape and Marriage – The Rideout Case. From December 1980 to January 1981, she played the role of Lisa Rogers in the CBS soap opera Secrets of Midland Heights. In 1982, she starred in the low-budget thriller Tag the Assassination Game, where she played the lead role alongside Robert Carradine. Say, it's a game. Got that? Yeah. The film also starred Bruce Abbott, who became the husband of our hero in the same year. A few years earlier, Linda had been diagnosed with depression and bipolar disorder. With time, her condition led to sudden mood swings and anxious thoughts. She did not even talk to her husband for a year and threw tantrums, suspecting him of infidelity. The situation worsened after a miscarriage in the early stages of pregnancy. Meanwhile, the actress starred in the TV movie Country Gold and the TV series King's Crossing, which allowed her to become one of the most promising new actors of the year. Soon, the filmography of the aspiring actress was enriched by the TV films Wishman and Secrets of a Mother and Daughter. In 1984, Hamilton starred in the horror Children of the Corn. In the film, based on the short story of the same name by Stephen King, the actress played Vicki Baxter, who got into trouble while traveling with her boyfriend in the countryside. Jesus Christ. Not in my book. It's like some sort of primitive folk art. I think it's repulsive. They wanted to create an authentic vibe, so almost all the filming was done in real cornfields. They used props only in some scenes. The film became financially profitable, grossing $14 million and exceeding the budget. However, it received mostly negative reviews from critics. 
Linda also appeared in the drama The Stone Boy, which starred Robert Duvall and Glenn Close. Later, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Michael Bean, she played in James Cameron's movie The Terminator. At that time, Linda was working on several minor roles, so she wasn't sure whether to take on another project, especially since the science fiction genre was not her favorite. But Cameron insisted on auditioning because the young actress was perfect for this role. As a result, she played Sarah Connor, a young waitress and the future mother of a valiant resistance leader who finds herself in the epicenter of a nightmarish ordeal. You're talking about things that I haven't done yet in the past tense. It's driving me crazy. Before the filming began, the actress broke her ankle, so she had to bandage her leg tightly to shoot the scenes. The film became an unexpected commercial hit, topping the U.S. box office for two weeks. Critics considered the movie an excellent example of the genre, partially attributing the success to Hamilton's acting skills. For this role, she received a nomination for the Saturn Award in 1985. Moreover, in 2008, the Library of Congress included it in its list of films recognized as the United States cultural heritage. Meanwhile, the audience saw our hero in four episodes of the NBC police drama Hill Street Blues. In 1985, Linda appeared in the TV film Secret Weapons. And Zara told us not to speak to anyone. You could have been KGB. You're not in Moscow five minutes and already playing with fire. I know. I'm wicked. Then Linda appeared in the image of a car thief named Nina in the 1986 sci-fi thriller Black Moon Rising. In the same year, she played the lead role in the TV drama Club Med, appeared in an episode of the popular crime series Murder, she wrote, and starred in the high-budget adventure film King Kong Lives, the sequel to the 1976 King Kong. Hello, Kong. Welcome back. Despite the advertising campaign, the sequel, crushed by critics, was a box office failure. At the same time, it became one of the highest grossing foreign films of the 1980s in the Soviet Union. Hamilton's next prominent role was as district attorney Catherine Chandler in the TV series Beauty and the Beast, where she starred with her good friend Ron Perlman. In two episodes, Linda worked with her husband, Bruce Abbott. I owe you everything. Everything. You owe me nothing. I'm part of you, Catherine. The series, a modern retelling of a classic fairy tale, was broadcast on the CBS channel for three seasons from 1987 to 1990. But by the third season, the actress was pregnant and asked to be excluded from the project, and the creators had to change the storyline urgently. Linda's leaving the series decreased viewer interest and led to a sharp drop in ratings, which is why it was canceled. This role brought our hero nominations for an Emmy and two Golden Globes in 1988 and 1989. Meanwhile, in 1989, Linda gave birth to a son named Dalton. However, unable to save their relationship, Linda and Abbott divorced. Soon, the actress returned to the silver screen, playing with Jim Belushi in the 1990 fantasy comedy Mr. Destiny. Any trouble finding the place? No, no trouble at all. <laughs> That's good. That's good. The following year, she teamed up with James Cameron again to reprise the role of Sarah Connor in the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You broke my arm. There are 215 bones in the human body. That's one. Now don't move. Linda underwent intensive physical training to highlight how her character has changed. After all, seven years have passed since the first movie's release. However, it was not without injuries. During filming, Hamilton suffered permanent hearing damage in one ear when Schwarzenegger fired a shotgun in the elevator after she took out the earplugs. Linda's loved ones also appeared in the movie. Her son played little John Connor in Sarah's Dream, and her twin sister appeared in the scene where the T-1000 android takes the form of Sarah. By the way, there were other twins in the movie. You probably remember the mental prison and one of its guards, a chubby man who likes to drink coffee. The latter's twin brother played the T-1000 when it took the form of this unlucky man. However, not only real twins, but also the actor's artificial doubles played in some scenes. Dummies had to be made even for Sarah. They were all burned in the episode where John Connor's mom has a nightmare of a nuclear explosion. Just... 
for the role of Sarah Connor, recognized as one of the most iconic female roles in cinema history, Hamilton earned $1 million. The picture has grossed a worldwide total of over $500 million with a budget of $102 million. Critics decided that our hero's performance was excellent. The actress also received two awards from the MTV Channel and the Saturn Award. Linda stated that she likes the image of Sarah Connor, but she would not want to be this character day and night. After the success of Terminator 2, the celebrity had to wear long-sleeved clothes for some time. After all, fans constantly approached her and asked her if she had the same muscles as her character. But fame wasn't the only thing she got after the movie. During the filming, she fell in love with James Cameron. On the wave of popularity, she was invited to host an episode of Saturday Night Live. Also, Hamilton auditioned for the female lead role in the 1992 film A Few Good Men, but the creators eventually offered it to Demi Moore. In 1993, Linda took part in a documentary about the making process of the second installment of The Terminator. And on February 15th, the creative couple Hamilton Cameron had a daughter, Josephine. And then again, the illness of our hero manifested itself. During the postpartum depression, she had panic attacks and obsessions about her husband's infidelity. During particularly severe obsession periods, she threw James's things away. Then, the actress starred in the thriller Silent Fall. Later, in 1995, the audience saw Linda in the lead role alongside James Belushi in the psychological thriller Separate Lives. At the same time, she appeared in the TV movie The Way to Dusty Death. Meanwhile, having to play a widow diagnosed with AIDS in the TV movie A Mother's Prayer, our hero received a Cable Ace Award and a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a Miniseries or TV Movie. By the way, in preparation for filming, Linda held to a strict diet. Hamilton auditioned for the role of Captain Catherine Janeway in the TV series Star Trek Voyager, but the curators eventually offered it to Kate Mulgrew. Also, she could have played Dr. Chase Meridian in the 1995 movie Batman Forever, but this role went to Nicole Kidman. In 1996, with the participation of Cameron and the team of creators of the first movies about the cyborg killer, an attraction called T2 3D Battle Across Time was launched in Los Angeles. For this, the leading actors from Terminator 2 starred in a 12-minute film about the War of the Future. A year later, Linda appeared in two films released just a week apart, Shadow Conspiracy with Charlie Sheen and Dante's Peak with Pierce Brosnan. None of the films were successful, either with critics or with the audience. However, the first one was a complete box office failure, but the actress received a Blockbuster Entertainment Award for her role in the latter. In 1997, she married James Cameron, who, at the time, was working on Titanic. The director offered his wife the role of socialite Molly Brown, but she refused. In the end, Kathy Bates played this role. Meanwhile, Hamilton appeared in the TV series Frasier, voiced the villainess Susan McGuire for an episode of the animated series The New Batman Adventures, and starred in several TV movies such as Rescuers, Stories of Courage, Two Couples, Point Last Scene, and The Color of Courage. All of them were based on real events, and the role in the latter brought the actress the Satellite Award for Best Actress. In 1999, our hero suffered another personal drama, a divorce from James Cameron. There is a rumor that this happened after Linda discovered that her second husband had an affair with actress Susie Amos while filming Titanic. According to reports, the divorce process of the star couple was one of the most expensive in Hollywood. But parting with her beloved man brought Linda not only $50 million, which allowed her to live a comfortable life, but also a lot of pain. She said she had deep feelings for James, but she also always suspected that he fell in love with her character, Sarah Connor, and not with her, because they are very different. James confirmed this suspicion. He said, I fell in love with her because I thought she was a little closer to Sarah than she is. As it turned out later, their divorce was not peaceful and left the woman emotionally devastated for many years. In the future, Hamilton was actively engaged in voice acting. She voiced the characters in the superhero animation movie Batman Beyond, an episode of the animated series of the same name, and two episodes of the adventure series Hercules. She also appeared in the lead role in the comedy drama The Secret Life of Girls. In 2000, Hamilton appeared in the comedy drama Sex and Miss X, voiced her character in three episodes of the adventure animated series Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, and headlined a production of Laura on California's Tiffany Theater stage. 
In 2001, she co-starred with Treat Williams in the drama thriller Skeletons in the Closet, subsequently receiving an exclusive DVD award for Best Supporting Actress. You know what I think? No, uh, what? I think we make a terrific team. In addition, she appeared in the TV series A Girl Thing and in the adventure film Bailey's Mistake as part of the television project The Wonderful World of Disney. Then, the actress starred in the lead role in the war drama Silent Night. For the next two years, she was on a break from acting. Still, she appeared in several short films. In 2003, Arnold Schwarzenegger walked back into Linda's life. However, this time, he did it not as an actor, but as a politician. Even though Hamilton calls herself a Democrat, during the election of the governor of California, she gave her vote to the Republican candidate, the lead actor from The Terminator. The performer of the role of Sarah Connor said that she did it because Schwarzenegger's election campaign convinced her that he was suitable for this job. She also explained that she respects her colleague very much for his balanced approach, incredible drive, and the fact that he is not involved in politics for personal purposes. In turn, Arnold Schwarzenegger admitted that Linda Hamilton is his best shooting partner and close friend. By the way, around that time, she refused to participate in Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines because she was dissatisfied with the script and did not want to remain a one-role actress. In 2004, Linda became a guest on The Oprah Winfrey Show. During the conversation, the topic of celebrity relationships came up. In particular, she said she insulted her first spouse and once splashed a glass of water in his face. In the same interview, the actress publicly apologized to Bruce for making him unhappy because he was intimidated by her. Linda admitted that thanks to the children, she realized that she needed the professional help of doctors. It took her a long time to get back to normal life. She was taking medications that helped her fight against depression for 10 years. Meanwhile, her filmography was enriched by the adventure movie Smile, the war drama Missing in America, the comedy The Kid and I, and an episode of the sitcom According to Jim, where James Belushi played the lead role. Wow! Either someone really needs a drink or someone's really insecure about their marriage. 2006 brought our hero roles in the miniseries Thief, a low-rated drama Broken, and the family drama Home by Christmas. Also played in the production of The Night of the Iguana, critics praised her work in this play, which took place on the stage of the Berkshire Theatre. In 2008, the actress starred in the indie movie In Your Dreams. In 2009, the audience saw Terminator Salvation. Linda did not star in the fourth installment, but voiced Sarah Connor in the flashback. In addition, she starred in the TV series The Line and the crime comedy Holy Water. Then, the actress voiced the character of the short animation film DC Showcase Jonah Hex, released as a bonus on DVD. Her voice was also heard in the short animation movie Superman and Shazam! The Return of Black Adam. In addition, Hamilton fans have seen her in three episodes of the series Weeds and the drama Refuge. Another project was the TV series Chuck, in which Linda starred from 2010 to 2012. That I was a mother. So I did the only thing I could. I admitted I was CIA, and I told Volkov I wanted to join him. I broke all ties with the agency, and I went to work for MI6. In 2013, our hero starred in the thriller Bad Behavior, two episodes of the miniseries Air Force One is Down, and began working in the TV series Lost Girl, appearing in three episodes until 2015. In 2014, Hamilton played in the comedy horror Bermuda Tentacles with Trevor Donovan and singer Maya. The audience also saw our hero in the science fiction series Defiance, released in 2014 to 15. Come on, where would I run to? We're in the middle of nowhere. <sighs> I know you want to kill me. Mom! Excuse me? In 2016, the actress starred in the sports movie A Sunday Horse. The following year, she won the award for Best Actress in the short film Shoot Me Nicely at the Williamsburg Independent Film Festival and performed one of the lead roles in the sci-fi thriller Curvature. You want some tea? Scratch that. I have some whiskey. Sound better? Much. In 2019, Sarah Connor, Linda's character from the iconic Terminator, appeared in the final version of the video game Gears 5. She also starred in the crime comedy film Easy Does It, for which she was named Best Actress at the LA Crime and Horror Film Festival. 
in the same year, after almost three decades spent trying to get rid of the shadow of Sarah Connor, the actress finally reprised this role in the action movie Terminator Dark Fate. Who's trying to track you? I'm on it in a couple of states. Fifty, actually. Before the film's release, she gave a big interview to the New York Times, in which she said that after the second divorce, she had been celibate for at least 15 years because intimacy did not matter to her. I have a very romantic relationship with my world every day and the people who are in it, the Terminator star said about her life. Linda also described herself as a person who loves her alone time like nothing else. Speaking about returning to the set, she admitted that she had been thinking for six weeks about whether to agree to play in the new Terminator. Linda didn't want to leave her comfort zone, having exchanged her peaceful and quiet life for numerous appearances on red carpets and press conferences. However, as soon as she saw Arnie on the set, she thought, I'm in. During the filming, she had to learn how to shoot a rocket launcher and return to combat form. She trained in the desert with the Green Berets, U.S. Army Special Forces. Doctors prescribed her dietary supplements and bioidentical hormones to build muscles. According to the actress, filming was difficult. We had ear infections from being in the water for three weeks, and then they'd hang us upside down, the star complained in an interview. However, she wanted to perform most of the tricks herself. Her efforts were not in vain. For her role, the actress received a nomination for the Saturn Award. After the filming ended, Linda spent three months on the couch eating pies. And yet she admitted that playing Sarah Connor again was fun. The release of Terminator Dark Fate coincided with the 35th anniversary of the release of the first Terminator. Despite the audience's interest in the new film, the actress admitted she no longer wants to return to this role. In 2020, she took part in voicing a character in an episode of the comedy animated series Big City Greens, and in the next two years, she starred in the TV series Claws and Resident Alien. They're symbols of guidance, of strength, of truth. That's what I am interested in, the truth. On June 23, it was announced that Linda Hamilton will join the cast of her favorite detective horror series from Netflix, Stranger Things. Scheduled for release in 2024, it will be the fifth and final season. The details related to the character of our hero are still a mystery. The celebrity's net worth is $70 million. In 2012, she paid $998,000 for a property in Virginia. The farmhouse, partially clapboarded, has an area of 4,600 square feet. Numerous farm outbuildings include a barn built in the 1850s with plumbing and electricity, a historic smithy, a barn for three stalls, and a separate garage with a workshop. Hamilton kept horses, goats, and chickens on the estate but sold the property in 2016 for $1.3 million. In 1995, the actress bought a house with an area of about 4,800 square feet in Malibu. It is a private area with manicured lawns, many trees, a patio, a swimming pool, and a waterfall. The spacious and cozy Mediterranean-style mansion has two fireplaces for cold California nights. The master bedroom is decorated in the style of a hut. In 2012, Linda sold this property for $4 million, initially putting it up for sale for $5.5 million. Fun fact, the actress has a tattoo on her waist with the coordinates of this villa. Previously, she owned several houses in Los Angeles, and the media wrote that she has an ocean view property near Sarasota, Florida, bought in 2003 for $850,000. Now, the celebrity lives in New Orleans. Linda spends weekdays with her pets, dogs, Turk, and Noodle in a cozy two-story townhouse with vintage furniture and walls decorated with paintings and portraits. Linda Hamilton had a more successful career on television than on the silver screen. However, she remains an unconquerable and beautiful Sarah Connor in our hearts, right? Interview's over. We gotta move. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.